never really understood. I mean, I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but it's kind of blows my mind that these TRT clinics are up all over the place, given how bad. I mean, I see the results because I have patients that come from them. And I don't understand, like, why they're so incompetent. Before you start treating millions of Americans with testosterone, you probably ought to think twice. Welcome back to our testosterone series. In part one, we talked about TRT prescriptions and the potential biases that doctors may have. But now, we're diving into the benefits and risks of choosing the right dose of testosterone. And I have a bold claim to make. There are no such thing as side effects. <laughs> I'd have to laugh at that. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but hear me out. When we take drugs, they aren't inherently good or bad. They simply have an effect. And what we commonly refer to as side effects are actually just undesired effects that are dependent on exposure. So the severity of the side effects is determined by the dose and time of exposure. This means that the regimen you choose for TRT directly correlates to the types of side effects you can expect. To better understand this, we're going to break down the scale of dose and side effects. But first, we need to talk about contraindications. These are signs that you should not be taking testosterone. You're drunk, give me your keys. And, and I'm drunk, so I'll give you my keys. Okay, now we're both good to drive home. In my opinion, these should be pretty cut and dry. But even here, some doctors have differing opinions. We run a men's center, and out of every 100 men who come in and say, I want testosterone, I have low T, I have this problem, only about 18% of them actually get testosterone because a lot of them have other issues. I would say less than 1% of the guys who come in, or maybe 1% who come in for evaluation, don't qualify because they're too high for whatever reason. But it's rare, very rare, that a man doesn't qualify. What? I find this pretty shocking. 18% versus 99%? Why would a doctor be so negligent to prescribe anyone that comes to them? I actually think it's worse than that. I think that they simply don't understand and don't care because it's a um, pill mill and it's a money mill. So if you have any of these, you should really consider not taking TRT as it could exacerbate your pre-existing condition. First up, men with a history of prostate cancer or elevated levels of prostate-specific antigen are generally not considered good candidates for TRT. Testosterone can stimulate the growth of prostate cancer cells, which we'll cover in depth in a second, so it's important to be cautious in these cases. Next, TRT has been associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular events, particularly in men with a history of cardiovascular risk factors. Likewise, TRT can increase the strain on the liver, so men with a history of liver disease or elevated liver enzymes should be cautious before starting TRT. A simple blood test can help determine if your liver enzymes are elevated. Finally, sleep apnea can be exacerbated by testosterone and rounds out the group of contraindications. However, if you don't have any of these negating factors, we can move on to the potential benefits of TRT. One of the most common issues that people with low testosterone face is low energy levels. To me, it was just very tired all the time. Lethargic, I just never had the energy to put in a day's work and then be able to work out like I used to. Testosterone also plays a crucial role in brain health and mood. Low levels of testosterone have been associated with significantly increased rates of depression. 56% of these men will have depressive symptoms on a validated depression screen, and this rate is much higher than that of the general population, which is about 5 to 25%. TRT also improves sex function and libido, and prevents erectile dysfunction by maintaining healthy levels of nitric oxide, a natural chemical that relaxes the smooth muscles in the blood vessels. When these muscles relax, blood flow increases, leading to an erection. And as we all know and love, testosterone can improve muscle mass and bone density. Now back to our exposure equation. Our goal is to achieve the beneficial effects we listed while avoiding the detrimental ones, right? So how do we do this with TRT? My answer lies in choosing the minimal dose necessary to achieve your goal while monitoring side effects with the exposure equation. Whether your goal is to replace deficient testosterone or to cruise and blast for eternity, finding the minimum dose at which you are achieving the desired effects is crucial. This dose allows you to get your desired effect while preventing excessive side effects or unnecessary receptor downregulation, allowing for a more sustainable cycle and post-cycle therapy. But even if you find the dose that works for you, you still need to be aware of the exposure equation. Exposure time leads to side effects, and it's essential to follow them as they manifest to understand where you stand in the equation. As with any medication, the first to present are low exposure effects, aka mild side effects. 
physiological doses, there should be no side effects. But because exogenous testosterone is being used, your testes aren't working, and thus they shrink. The exogenous testosterone suppresses the hormones LH and FSH that normally stimulate the testes and testicular atrophy presents. Which, by the way, is a physiologic dose. That's not going to give somebody any of the side effects you would see. You're not going to get acne with that. You're not going to get gynecomastia. You're not going to get anything. The only real side effect you get from that is you will get testicular atrophy. For all the best information, I use our software, Polypharm Solutions. Here you can input all of your medications you're taking and predict potential side effects that you should be looking out for. Sign up for the waitlist in our mobile app or try the software yourself with the links below. As the dose increases, one of the more common side effects of TRT is acne and skin irritation. Testosterone causes acne by stimulating the sebaceous gland in the skin to produce sebum, an oily substance that can clog pores and lead to the formation of blackheads, whiteheads, and pimples. And another side is hair loss. Testosterone can convert to dihydrotestosterone, which causes hair follicles to shrink and ultimately leads to hair loss. This is because an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase converts testosterone to DHT, which binds to hair follicles on the scalp and causes them to shrink over time. Monitoring these side effects might not be that important as they are quite mild, but as we slide up the scale of severity, this is where monitoring becomes crucial. The 5-alpha reductase enzyme we mentioned earlier is found primarily in the prostate. And when we exogenously use testosterone, our prostate works overtime, converting it to DHT. This can lead to the development of benign prostatic hyperplasia, a non-cancerous enlargement of the prostate gland, or full-on prostate cancer. This is why it's important to check your PSA levels before, during, and after using testosterone to be able to compare levels. TRT can also increase the risk of heart disease and blood diseases. One mechanism involves the effects of testosterone on erythropoiesis, which is the process of red blood cell production, making the blood thicker, and also the effects on the coagulation cascade, which is a series of events that lead to the formation of a blood clot. Testosterone can increase the production of clotting factors such as fibrinogen and von Willenbrand factor, which can promote clot formation and could lead to a stroke. And as we mentioned earlier, the suppression of LH and FSH can negatively impact the development and maturation of sperm, decreasing sperm count and resulting in infertility at high levels of exposure. In the next video, we're going to be discussing how to optimally plan for TRT and track all of the potential side effects. So follow along.